we're getting comfy okay hi guys what is up welcome back to my channel my name is Peyton if you guys are new here and I'm back with another sit down video which feels so weird I haven't been filming sit down videos in like forever I recently uploaded my life update video that told you guys like where I'm going to PA school and all that and that was also sit down styled and I figured the best way to film this video was also like a sit down chat with a little pal a little big sister maybe and I basically want to give you guys all my tips and tricks for getting into PA school, how I think I got into PA school, and just my advice for going through the process because it is so overwhelming and I'm very much aware of that. So, if you guys are totally new to being like a pre-PA student, like maybe you guys are freshmen or sophomores, this is probably a little bit like advanced for you, meaning like more the later stages, like starting junior, senior year-ish. Um, I have made a video like pretty much exactly a year ago, I think, about like pre-PA basics. So that might be more your style if you're like a little bit younger and not quite at the point to which you're applying. Either way, I think this video will be helpful for anybody who's interested in PA school. And um, I'm kind of breaking it down into three little sections. One section is gonna be like pre-application. So kind of like my advice for what to do when you're in college, like undergrad, or maybe like doing your gap year, like kind of advice for that sort of stuff, kind of building up your resume and your application. The second section is gonna be CASPA tips, um, basically application tips, like your personal statement, CASPA in general, that sort of thing. And then the final section is gonna be interview tips. So I'll put little timestamps in, in the description box down below, just because I know some people are in all different stages of this process. And if you wanna like skip and go to whatever feels right for you, I want you to be able to do that. So I'll put that stuff down below. Okay, I'm like having an itch attack on my back right now. A little bit about me, just if you guys are new here, I recently got into PA school. I got into two of my top three schools and I had chosen to go to Michigan State University and I start in May. So if you guys wanna know more about that, you can check out my life update video that I posted recently. Let me just say, please take everything I say with a grain of salt. I am not a professional. I literally just got in. Um, I did, like I got waitlisted from some schools. Like I'm not perfect and nobody's perfect and the application process in general is not perfect. I am just trying to spread like knowledge in everything that I learned and stuff I wish I would have known. So like, don't take everything I say so seriously. <laughs> and if you disagree with something, that is great and uh, to each their own, but I'm just doing this to kind of help those who might feel a little bit lost or just wanna know more. Let's get into it, you guys. So pre-PA before you apply section. Some things like for me personally in undergrad that I think helped me. Starting off with my leadership experience. So I was co-president and on the e-board for two clubs that I was super passionate about. They were both related to healthcare. Um, one was like a pre-health honor society and then one was kind of like a club that like helped bridge the gap between healthcare and homelessness. And while it's very good to just be involved in general, I think like me being and having a leadership role really elevated my experience with each of these clubs and then allowed me to have so much more to talk about both in my personal statement and in my interview session. Choosing maybe like one club extracurricular that you really wanna be a huge part and have a huge role in is my first tip. My second tip is volunteering, but for something that genuinely makes you happy. So for example, I think a lot of people think like you should volunteer like at a hospital because you're going into healthcare. For me, I volunteered for an elementary school and mentored little students that had nothing to do with healthcare, <laughs> but it was still volunteer experience showing that you're passionate. It kind of like gives you it allows the like admissions committee to see like another side of you, like something else you're passionate about. Your whole life does not have to be passionate about healthcare. You're not a robot. So I think this um, particular volunteer experience that I had with little kids really showed, cause I love kids and it showed that side of me and was also another really good talking point that I could use to my advantage. And that could literally be anything. Like if you want to volunteer for a hospital, great. And that'll that's not a bad thing. But if you are like, oh, I think this would be like so much more fun for me than do it like your volunteer experiences don't have to be just centered around healthcare. I think I genuinely think that the biggest or a 
big portion of me getting into PA school was how much I loved my MA job right now. So I'm an MA at an OBGYN office and am obsessed with my job. Like I am not just saying that. <laughs> and of course there's like some parts about my job that aren't great and everybody's gonna have that. But I think because I found like, first of all, a specialty that I'm so passionate about, women's health. And then secondly, just genuinely en enjoyed what I do as an MA. I think that spoke a lot to how I'm gonna feel as a PA and like how excited I'm gonna be to go to work as a physician assistant. So I understand though that lots of people won't necessarily have the privilege to work at a job where they're genuinely happy. But if you could try to find some perks to your job, like some positivity out of the patient care hours you're getting, I think that really helps let the admissions committee know that you are passionate about healthcare. Working in healthcare makes you happy. It gets you excited to wake up every day. Even if that's not totally true, I advise you to like, kind of shift your perspective and remember that patient care hours, while yes, they're getting you money, they're also supposed to show that you're committed to healthcare and that you're passionate about it. So just keep that in mind. Um, I wouldn't necessarily go into the interview being like, yeah, like I didn't love being an MA, but like I'm so excited to be a PA because like they're not, they're, while they're totally different, you gotta like start somewhere and I just suggest having a positive mindset about whatever patient care hours you got before applying. Now, with all that being said, patient care hours, volunteer leadership, don't overdo it. You need to be a happy and healthy person physically and mentally, like to be a PA, to get through PA school. They need to know that like you're able to, yes, handle some rigor, but also like take care of yourself. Um, that was something I really touched on in my interviews um, and in my personal statement was that like, while yes, I can do all this, I also value my mental and physical health and know how to say no to things and know how to stop and take a break when I need it. And just remember that like in general, like you don't have to be a perfect student. You And notice how I did not touch on GPA through any of this, like yes, GPA matters, but it's not the whole story. So I didn't even want to talk about GPA, but anyways, um, so just don't overdo it and remember to take care of yourself and try to just take each step at a time and don't look too far in the future, otherwise it gets really overwhelming. So take care of yourself, okay? And then my last tip for this section is to make sure that you, this kind of goes right into, it segues nicely into the next section of applying, but pick schools that you want to apply to that fit you. Like don't try to fit into the schools and what I mean by this is like their mission statement, like where they're located, etc. Like for Michigan State, the school I got into, fit me so perfectly. Like my application like screamed to Michigan State University and I think that's a huge reason why I got in there. Same with the other school I got into, like it just made sense. So remember that like when you're applying is to pick schools that like make sense and that like your work, your leadership and your volunteer experiences have kind of led you to. So those are five tips. Now, <laughs> the fun stuff, your application, AKA the most stressful part of this entire process. And I don't say that to scare you, but like I want you to be prepared that it's gonna take, at least for me, and this could be different for everybody, but it took every little ounce of energy I had and just took it all from me, okay? So my first and most probably important tip for you about the application process is to start early. Okay, everybody told me that when I was a junior, senior. Everybody was like, you should start the January before the summer that you apply. I was like, yeah, right, like that's not gonna happen. I was also super busy, so I didn't, but I started so late, you guys. I started at the beginning of June. Like I started thinking about things for sure, like in May, maybe even April, but like I began the process at the beginning of June and that's when some people are literally submitting their applications. So just start early. Don't even like try to get away with it. I mean, I did get away with it, but like it was so stressful that I don't re recommend procrastinating. Tip number two is you're gonna have so many little sections on this application where you're typing things. Um, whether that be your personal statement, obviously, or you're gonna like type little blurbs about every single thing you write about, like your academic experiences, your um, extracurricular, your jobs, like you have like little blurbs that you write for each thing. 
have somebody proofread every single word that you write down on that application. I was fortunate enough to have my dad super involved with me on the process. So if you guys have a parent, a grandma, an aunt that's like willing to like read all of this writing that you produce, that's great. Otherwise, have a friend, have like a professor, like somebody, just especially if anything, have them read your personal statement, obviously. But I had my dad go through every single word that I wrote down on that application because sometimes things sound really good in your head and then my dad would be like, is this English? And I'm like, yeah. So like just get a second opinion on pretty much everything you write. Now with that comes some struggle because somebody will say like they hate something, especially your dad or somebody close to you will say like they'll be honest with you and then it, it's hard because like you think what you wrote was amazing and then they're like no. So it comes with like some negatives to it as well but I know that if my dad had not proofread everything, my application would not have come across as seamless as I had hoped it would. Okay. Let's talk about your personal statement. Um, now this is one of the topics where I feel like I could talk about it for like an hour, but my biggest tip with your personal statement is to, basically your personal statement to me was like a reflection on my life, like since the day I was born, and how all my life experiences had led to me pursuing a career as a physician assistant. And I think that can be very overwhelming. Like you have a limited amount of words. It's probably the hardest part of your application. I'm sure you've heard of that. Um, my biggest tip is to center that like around a theme, like kind of figure out like the theme of your life and that way every experience you have can like relate back to the theme and it makes it seem more cohesive and less discombobulated. Like trust me, my first draft of my personal statement was so discombobulated, it was painful. Um, so my theme was like advocacy and I like took things from like my childhood that related to that to like my undergrad to like me working as a medical assistant right now and was able to connect it all back and then like full circle it to like being a PA is ad being an advocate at the end of the day. So it doesn't have to even be that crazy or that original or that unique, but you just want to make sure you pick something that makes your personal statement seem more cohesive because that personal statement is a beast. That will be what you spend most of your time doing in this application process. Okay. Another thing that really I think helped me personally is like I said, you have a chance to write down like everything in that application that you want them to know you did, whether that be an extracurricular or like a volunteering experience or like a trip you took. Um, if you were like captain of a soccer team, you can write everything. But my biggest piece of advice is to only pick the things that you are genuinely passionate about and can talk about. Like, if you volunteered one time at a food bank in your uh, college experience, don't include that. Like, that's just silly because it's like two hours of your life and if they like decide to ask you about that in your interview, you're not gonna have much to talk about. Like you might as well spend your time writing down things in CASPA that actually matter to you and that you actually want them to know about you. Um, and I also think it can be like come across as a bit desperate if you're picking like all these random things that you did throughout your entire four years of undergrad that don't really speak to who you are and just aren't really that important. So just be picky with what you put in that application and make sure they're all talking points and all things you feel comfortable with the person you interview with asking you about. Okay, this is just something I wish I had known, but once like, so you have like these little sections, I forget what it is. It's like your supporting info, your academic information, like your basic information. And then you have like specific things that each school like you have specific questions you answer for each school in a separate section so like for example when i went to apply to my first school let's say it was butler university i hit that submit button and thank god i was like ready to do that but i didn't realize that you cannot go back and adjust anything in the um CASPA application for the next school you submit to. So like once you hit that submit button, like it's locked in. Of course you can go edit the specific questions for each school, but the stuff that goes to all the schools, like your personal statement, for example, and like everything you write about yourself cannot be edited. So just know that. <laughs> okay, and that brings us to the interviewing stage, which I think, I don't know, it's hard to say. It's like, 
I think the most enjoyable stage because you've done all the hard work and for my personality now is just the time for you to talk and it's less about like writing and it's just like less thinking but also very stressful like don't get me wrong I was literally shaking before my first interview so I just want to give you guys some tips that really helped me along the way um, my first interview was by far my worst interview so I don't know if that happens with everybody, but just know that like it gets better the more you do it My biggest tip of all like if I were to tell anybody anything it is when you go into each of your interviews I suggest for you to have five things about your life your experiences your personality That you want that person to know about you and when you have those five things already right here in your brain like front and center you are more easily able to access them and use them to your advantage when answering questions like if somebody asks you like what was a time where you faced adversity that's a super open-ended question and lots of the questions they ask you are and so if you already have something in your head that you want to talk about and you think you can navigate it into the question they just asked you it's so much easier and I remember with Michigan State I left there knowing that they knew everything that I wanted them to know about me and it was just like because you get so stressed and overwhelmed so like it's really hard to think about your entire life unless you have like those five talking points like rehearsed and ready to go um and then it just makes you feel very fulfilled after the interview you're like heck yeah they know the most important things about me i feel good about it number two prepare but know that there's a balance like you like you're not expected to have a perfect interview however you're expected to like actually like know a few things for example you better know what a pa is inside and out like they're gonna ask you the definition of a pa at least some of my people did or like what they do at work like they're gonna ask you specific questions about the profession that you need to know and some ways that i've like prepared for this was like reading books and youtube videos that those were my main two also i have a whole video of how to prepare for a p school interview if you guys are interested i'll link that down below too there's like basic questions that you know they're going to ask you that you should be prepared for however i wouldn't rehearse it to the point where it sounds robotic if that makes sense like have some like answers some general things but then like Give yourself a little wiggle room for when you're in the interview to maybe like throw some jokes in or like, I don't know, kind of like hinder it to the personality of the person you're interviewing with. So like, just, it's gonna be obvious if you sound super rehearsed. So that's my advice. And I know that's a hard piece of advice, but there is such thing as being too prepared because then it just doesn't sound genuine. But at the same time, you need to be prepared because you they will know if you are like, very impulsively applying to PA school. <laughs> Number three is kind of what I just kind of hinted at. They are not expecting you to be a perfect human being and to have no flaws. Um, interviews are actually a good time to be a little bit vulnerable, to touch on some things that you know weren't so great about your application or about your experiences in general. Um, some hardships that you faced that maybe led to your application not being so perfect. Like mistakes you've made in, made in the past. Like, like for example, if they ask you about a time where you've ever had a conflict with somebody, you're not supposed to sit there and be like, oh no, I don't have conflicts with people. Like, no. Okay, and if that's the case, you're gonna have a conflict when as a PA. So like, don't try to be a perfect human. Like, there's beauty in the ugliness of this world and that's kind of what they're looking for is somebody who's like honest and authentic. So don't be a robot, it's not cute and nobody wants to talk to a robot either. <laughs> Tip number four, don't BS your answers. Um, I remember at one of the interviews for school I got in with actually, she asked me a question about like something specific to the healthcare field and like a problem that they were facing like with COVID or something. And to be honest, I just did, did not have an answer. I don't know if I was just tired or having a brain fart or what, but I admitted that to her. I was like, honestly, like I do not have an answer to that, but the person who was asking the question was a PA herself. So then I turned it around to her and I was like, is there anything like any, advice you have on this subject that you can tell me and then it ended up being like a cool like learning experience and like a good conversation so it's okay if you don't know the answers to everything but also even if they ask you a question about like yourself and something you like you don't have right away you can either say can we come back to this or you can just straight up say like i don't really have an answer to that right now but don't just bull you know, because it's gonna be so obvious. If I had made something up about what that lady asked me about like a problem facing PAs with COVID, like I would have sounded so dumb. 
and I probably wouldn't have gotten in. So it, there's like, they will have respect for you for admitting that you don't know the answers to everything. Okay, my last tip is have a solid pre-interview routine. Mine personally included, when I had the luxury to do so, was a workout to get my anxiety out, and then also listening to Taylor Swift. Um, that just made me feel really comforting. Taylor Swift is like nostalgic to me. Um, so just doing things that like make you feel like you're comfortable and like at home and like gonna be talking to a friend, and then also just putting on like a boss outfit and making yourself feel good and yeah making sure you have some food in your belly because some of these interviews can be long um so just making sure you take time to take care of yourself before going into that interview like do not like prepare like just an hour before your interview that will cause a lot of anxiety so like when it's nearing time that you're about to interview that didn't make sense when your time is coming like an hour, two hours beforehand, stop doing all the preparing and start taking care of yourself. Okay, you guys, I really hope that was helpful to you guys and I hope you learned something. And I always say this, but I'm always here for anybody who needs like extra advice, but I hope I helped you guys and you guys got this, okay? Like, I guess an overall piece of advice in general is before you apply, know that you can and will become a PA. Like, do not doubt yourself. You need to talk positively to yourself, whether you're feeling it or not, okay? But you need to like do those affirmations over and over in your head. Like, cause if you genuinely believe you're not gonna be a PA, like that will affect your interview and all of that good stuff. So be confident. And if you're not confident, fake it. Fake it till you make it, okay? But I hope that was helpful, you guys. Uh, thank you for watching. And like I said, if you guys have any other questions, any more videos you want me to make, just let me know because I am passionate about this stuff. And if I can make it into PA school, so can you. And that's all I got for you. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.